I know what you're thinking. Yes, I have learned the D1. Oops, there's the D9. Oops, there's D10. There's D60. And all of them say confusing things sometimes. For example, a planet is exalted in D1, but it is debilitated in D9. So what do you do? Do you just do plus minus? Now, what if it is in Moultricone in the D10? Hmm, plus minus plus. So it's good, right? No, that's not how we go about with the divisional charts because what happens is if we keep doing plus minus then we can get to an answer like for example you say okay two charts are plus two one one is minus so overall it is positive but then when you say overall it's positive what positive it is like positive for what positive in which area of life so that is where we will go wrong and as students of astrology or as an astrologer if you are consulting somebody then it is imperative that you just don't say things like you know oh yeah it is good you know it's bad it's average it's nice it's not so nice no no P people don't want to hear all this they want to know what will this planet do in my life how is this planet's energy acting in my life so that is exactly what you have to say you can say things like it is good for your profession, but not good for your marriage. That is okay. But you have to give some quantifiable uh, explanations when somebody asks you a question. Okay. So therefore, today, that's exactly what we are going to see. How to differentiate or how to you know reduce confusion, how to get rid of confusions basically within the divisional charts and the D1. All right. So you can use this for d1 and other divisional charts or within other divisional charts also all right so if you're new then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the content and if you want a personalized consultation from me regarding your chart my website is down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him for sure now you have to understand what every divisional chart represents all these nonsense things like, you know, plus, minus, good, bad comes only because we do not have the right understanding of every divisional chart. Which means if you do not understand what exactly which area of life a divisional chart represents, then you will just keep guessing. Okay, And even if your predictions are right, it will not help the person because you cannot say anything uh, which is related to the person's real life. So therefore, the first step to dispelling the confusion is to understand what does this divisional chart represent, which area of life. So for example, the D1 chart is the culmination of all the divisional charts and your external world. For example, the D1, seventh house of the D1 represents your married life represents open enemies, represents your uh, business partners, it represents your sexual organs, and so many things, okay? So, which one of this? So, suppose your seventh house is activated. So, now you may say, oh, yeah, yeah I'm 25 plus, you know, in India, so maybe I'll get married, fine. But what if your seventh house gets activated at the age of 35 and you are already married? So, does it mean will you remarry? <laughs> Or does it mean you will have a new business partnership? Or maybe you will have some problems in some physical organ. So what does it mean, right? So any it can mean anything. Okay, so this is what you have to understand. But when the seventh house is activated and the house activation is always from the Lagna chart, the D1 chart, right? So when the Lagna uh, chart is active, then you know something related to that, ho that house will be activated. Now, what that is, that you have to do for the analysis. So, this is step number one. So, similarly, you need to know what is the D9. The D9 shows how, what the person is feeling internally. It may or may not reflect outside. So, for example, if in D1, you have a great dasha of a planet sitting in the 10th house and you become very famous, okay? But suppose that planet is in the 8th house of D9. What happens is you will always be fearful and insecure. You will try to badmouth your competitors and you know say hateful things. You will be very jealous. You will be very envious of others. Therefore, now you know this, this house is acting in a different way. Because in the D9, the 8th house is active. So the person is becoming uh, very jealous. Okay, The person is becoming very fearful inside. 
Now, will this jealousy or fearfulness lead to downfall in reputation? Well, that will not happen because the D1 is telling that the person is becoming famous. But what is happening is internally, the person is very miserable. So it's like saying, now how do you match both? It's like saying uh, a person has become famous, but not because of hard work and you know patience and perseverance. It's like suddenly the person has become famous because of which what is happening now the person is fearful because the person has not sufficiently worked towards that name fame, right? And because of that, the person is feeling maybe somebody will come and, you know, snatch my uh, you know, popularity, will take away my students, my followers, my fans or, you know, my uh, whatever, my subordinates and, you know, I, I will lose all influence, okay? So therefore, uh, you need to understand that how this will play out, okay? So similarly now, let's talk of the D10. So, so suppose uh, in in the D1 chart, you take the opposite scenario. You know, in the D1, what is happening is the eighth house is active. Okay, so eighth house is active, which means, you know, the person is either running into a scandal or is having some um, disease, like, you know, it's a, it could be some very uh, serious disease. Or the person is, you know, uh, running into something very deep, okay? It's trying to understand something. It's like going deep into things, maybe learning, research, and all this. So now, what, what, what among these will happen? Okay, so now suppose this planet is in the, D9, in the ninth house of the D9 chart. So what happens is, now the person will actually <clears throat> internally what will happen is the person is wanting to learn something that is why the person is going deep into something okay so people say research is eighth house or ninth house they say eighth house but you need to understand research is always a combination of the eighth and the ninth okay and the fourth and the fifth also to some extent but now this same planet is in the tenth house of the d10 chart and let's assume it is well placed so then what will happen is this person will go into depth of things and will want to learn something by default out of his or her free will, free nature, out of interest and passion the person will learn because it's in the ninth house of D9. But now what is the objective of learning this? The objective is the person wants to get a promotion or you know get some name, fame or popularity in the profession because the 10th house in the D10 is getting activated. So it's like saying a person is going into research because the D1 is indicating the 8th house and the D9 shows 9th house. So it is by free will and passion. And the objective is because the person wants an elevation in his uh, or her status. Okay. So this is how you will know. So now this is the step, uh, first step. Then the second step is to identify the dignity. So for example, if if in if suppose the D, D9 and D10 are good, okay, but the D1 is not good. So that means the planet is in the 8th house, but is not in a very good dignity. So what will happen is the person will not be able to understand what he is studying because of free will and for the promotion. The person is not able to understand anything. The person will not be able to, um, you know, yeah, the person will not be able to master that skill, okay? Now, you take the opposite scenario. The D1 and D9 is good, but the D10 is not good, which means that in D10, there's a planet in the 10th, but it is in debility. So what, what, what does this mean? This means the person wants to learn something out of free will and will be successful in learning because the D1 is good, but the D10 is bad, which means the person's objective is not very noble, which means the person may be wanting a promotion, you know, to take revenge on some competitor or some colleague or, you know, like to prove something to somebody or to pull down somebody. Okay, so that objective is not very noble and the person is not very happy doing it, but the person is still doing it uh, because uh, the person wants to do it. The person wants the flavors of the 10th house. Okay, <clears throat> so therefore, this is exactly how you can know what what is the end result of a planet so therefore whenever you talk of end results do not forget to check all the divisional charts okay so these these four charts are most important the d1 chart 
which is your Lakna chart, which is also known as Rashi chart, which tells you the zodiac signs a planet is placed in. That will tell you the dignity. And then the Bhava Chalit chart, BC, Bhava Chalit chart, Bhava chart, Bhava Chalit chart. I am saying it again and again because that tells you which house a planet is placed in and everybody misses that chart. <laughs> Then the D9 chart tells you what's going on inside your head. Why are you doing it? What's your motivation? And the D10 tells you how do you plan to use that in your profession. Okay. So therefore, if, if you understand every divisional chart, step one, and then you try to connect the clues, uh, as they say, try to connect the dots. And finally, you see the result in the D1 and in the Bhava chart, that will exactly tell you is this planet good or bad for you for some particular area of life okay not in general you know not like some exaggerated you know superficial things oh this planet is nice bad you know no you can answer questions in real time in real time a person is asking you please mr astrologer tell us what will this planet do you can tell directly that internally this is what you're thinking and externally, that is what you want, right? And then, will it will it happen as per your will or not? That we have to see from the D1 and the Bhav Chale chart, okay? So, therefore, I hope this helps you to understand how actually we go about doing the analysis from various divisional charts or else you will only, you will only make guesses at best, all right? And out of 10, even if two or three guess, uh, guesses that you make, uh, two or three are correct also, it, it does not make any sense because uh, you cannot help anybody at the end, all right? So therefore, please use the divisional charts and use the D1 and the Bhav Chale chart, okay? So these five charts are very important. Lagna chart, Bhav chart, D9, D10, <clears throat> and also the Sastiyamsha, okay? So always use these five charts. And if the person is asking specific questions like, you know, property and all this, you know, then you have to use the other divisional charts, okay? Please let me know which is the divisional chart that talks about property, all right? Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with somebody who is confused about divisional charts and don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed already. And for consultations, please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him for sure <laughs> take care